Okay, now that we have the local buffer set up, we're ready to install the signal man. Um, I have a signal man S here, and the signal man requires uh, these three wires, or this plug is going to go straight into the gateway. Um, the center wire, the green, I think as I showed before, is the data line, and the red and the black are going to be the power, and they plug into the three three of the wires here on the signal man uh, with the green being in the middle again and these three wires can be used to or the three connections here can be used to daisy chain to another signal man over here there's four sets of outputs and that's going to be head one two three and four um, in the uh, programming and each of the head lines have a common uh, this is how they're they're uh, labeled here right on the board you can see a C for common green yellow R for red and there's an L for lunar so you can have four separate outputs with one common on each uh, head um, you can also uh, configure these in the programming uh, to do a, a two wire output or a three wire output with a red and green and a common um, and you can do multiple um, uh, wires on this uh, same head. You can have four different outputs on this one head and you'll see how we uh, program those in the uh, on the spreadsheet. And then I've already connected uh, two uh, target signals here. Uh, they're BLMA target signals. They have a separate output for uh, red, yellow, and green and as a common uh, positive uh, for uh, the one head. So I've, I've put the, the uh, four wires into this uh, head one and four wires into head two. They're gonna correspond to the two target signals um, and we can go program those now. Okay, I've now plugged in the signal man into the gateway and I've opened and I have the uh, two signals uh, hooked up here. Uh, I haven't done anything yet to the signal man, it's simply plugged in. Um, so next thing we're going to do is open Decoder Pro and go to, uh, make sure it's in programming on the main down here and I change up top here to LocoNet. I don't know if that makes a difference, but anyways, it's on LocoNet. And we're going to do New Loco. And make sure this is changed to LocoNet. You can see, do NCE or LocoNet. Uh, in paged mode. And we go down to uh, our, our circuits, decoders. Come on, open up. And Signal Man. It's right in the current version of Decoder Pro. There we go. ID is going to be Signal Man. For me, I'm going to, uh, you can give it a name um, as to where it's going to be on the layout. Mine's going to be in the 400 block. So I'm going to call it Signal Man 400. And that's all we need here. Um, and we go to the Basic tab. We're going to set it up with a new address. Now every Signal Man is shipped with an address of 9999. Okay, I'm going to give it an address of 10001. I already have a, the other signal man uh, is going to be is 10,000. So this one's going to be 10,001, and we can write the changes on the sheet. Okay, and it's gone white. So the new signal man should now have an address of 10,001. So when we go back to programming on the main or pull up uh, this roster spot 
um, we can program to that signal man again in the future. Now, it's, it's easiest to think of the signal man as a stationary decoder, just like if you had a switch 8 on your layout um, or decoders set up on your turnouts or something, and you're sending it an address uh, over the DCC bus. Um, the signal man is basically the same sort of thing. So now we can program the various aspects into the mass. On the brightness page, you can change the brightness of your LEDs. Now, I, I failed to mention that you don't need to install any um, types of resistors. Um, the uh, signal man automatically sets up for the current for any type of LED and uh, will not uh, harm the LEDs. Uh, just uh, directly wired into the signal man. Um, so you can adjust the lamp brightness here. Um, this is the main page that we're going to be using. Um, as I mentioned, the signal man operates as a stationary decoder and, and it becomes much easier when you realize that. And what we're doing, is we're, we're sending it turnout commands, just the same way you would send a command to your uh, stationary decoder on, on a tortoise or something. So we're going to set up a turnout address. It's communicating over the loco net. And we're going to send a turnout address to the signal man over the loco net. So we, we send it the turnout. We're going to put in the address here for the various aspects that we want. And, um, and then you can send a thrown or closed command for each of those turnout commands. So, and then this is your masked group. This is very important. So each head is, or masked, is going to have a masked grouping. Okay, so we're going to leave this as number one. This is going to be masked one. But when we go to the next mast, um, we have to change this to number two. Otherwise, if we send a command to this mast, and if this were left as one, it would override all the other commands um, that are existing on the, on the first page. So that mast would turn off, and this one would turn on, based on the latest command that we send to it. Sorry, and, and that's for something else. That's for the light, how we want the light to appear. Or the signal, sorry. So we're going to put these all to two. Don't know if we'll need this many aspects, but uh, anyways, send those all to. And whenever we make a change, we can uh, write the changes to the signal man. It goes very quickly. Okay, so these are all set to two now. Okay, so let's go back to our panel. Okay, let's look at setting up these signal men now. In the uh, setting up the signal man to throw these various signals. Okay, if you recall, this one's number 37A and this one's 42A. So if we go to our signal mass table, let's look at 37A and the commands that JMRI is going to send to the signal man are 59, uh, turn out 59 closed. 58 thrown and 58 closed and we got to write those down that's going to be clear approach and stop okay and I wrote down the same thing for 42a so we'll close that close that we go to our programmer and we're going to be setting up mast one. Let's uh, uh, we're on mast A. Let's set up mast A as 42A over on the left side. So we go to our column here. Um, for the red is 60. Sorry, 
Okay, let's go to mass B since those are the ones we just took down. Okay, so we got local net turnout command, and that's going to be 58 closed, 58 closed, and that is the stop. So we want the um, we want head to red. And that's going to be a steady state. Okay, we don't have to worry about these. I always make sure that these are different. So H2 green. So yellow, green, and lunar. So those are all set to none. Okay, so all we have on is the red. And this is group two. So our mass two. Okay, for the yellow now we want command 58 and that was thrown. Okay, so we're already at thrown. And that's going to be yellow H2Y, which is I have the yellow light hooked up to the Y um, on steady. Red, green, none, lunar, none. Okay, and the last aspect is going to be 59 closed. Group 2, and that's going to be the green aspect, H2 green, and steady, we want the, let's put the red, H2 red here, and yellow none, red none, lunar none, okay, and Let's update, uh, write the changes. Write changes on the sheet. That sends the changes to the signal man. And let's see what we have now for mass two. Okay, if I click on that was uh, 38, correct? So that was that one. And you can see over here, that's green here on our panel. And it goes green, yellow, red. Wow. Okay, let's see if we can do that with the logic. Now, where's our sensor table? I want the single mast. Let's go to sensors. Pull up our table. Okay, so let's block 380. Let's open that up. Inactive. Changes to green. Great. Boom. What happens if we turn the uh, turnout? Changes to red. Perfect. Okay, let's look at that again. Let's try and set up mast 42. Let's see if we can change this one over here. So the signal mass, the commands for 42. We go to our signal mass. Okay. 42, the commands are 64 thrown, 64 closed, and 65 thrown. Okay, so we go over to our programmer. And we're going to look at mast A. So for the red aspect, we got 64 thrown. And this is group 1. Okay, that's going to be red steady. Let's change this one to green. H1 green now. H1 yellow. None. H1 lunar. Okay, so the different aspects. And red is going to be on steady. For the next, for the yellow command, we had 64 closed. Group 1. That's going to be yellow steady. H1 green none. H1 red none. H1 lunar none. Okay, 
And for our green command, we had 65 thrown. That's going to be green steady, yellow none, red none, and lunar none. Okay, and let's write the changes on the sheet. Okay, you can see our light went out when it uh, got a command sent to change. So we got our sensor table, our panel. Sorry, let's pull up our sensors. And let's see now, let's watch. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, let's try throwing some blocks and see what happens. So let's try block 380. That goes to red and our signal turns to red. If we throw the turnout, that goes to green, our signal turns to green. This is looking really good. How about if we throw block 450? That goes red, and that changes, oh, I don't know why that one changed red, but changed on our panel. Anyways, we'll have to figure out the logic a little better, but um, that's looking pretty good. So. Anyways, there we go. Uh, you set up the table. Uh, we set up the signal man. The table communicates with the signal man. And the signal man sends the um, aspects to the signals. And that's uh, the crux of our system. And um, took a lot of playing around with the panel to get all of the logic just right. But if you remember, just to click on those buttons, it should find the logic automatically. Um, and uh, hope you got something from this. Uh, I'm just a beginner. I just taught myself how to do this over the last uh, week or so. And I uh, um, hope that makes it a little simpler for you. Let's see what your real name is. 